Welcome to episode 102, getting ready to record here. Hope that all of you are doing well out there. It is a bright, sunny day here in Florida. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful outside. Getting ready for a great day this Sunday at our church. Yeah, I'm excited about it. We're going to have our our one-year anniversary at our church here in Florida. One-year leading beachside. Yep, and um, to celebrate, there's going to be a tailgate party afterwards. Yep. Which is the perfect way for you to celebrate because yep. of how much you love football and gonna represent wear my Hawkeye jersey. <coughs> so down here in Florida. Uh-huh. And I'm gonna represent and wear his Hawkeye jersey. Yes. I'm I'm really afraid you're gonna spill food or grease or something on it. I probably will. That's why I think that I shouldn't wear it. You'll have to wear a towel while you're eating. <laughs> Bib. Put one in. Bib it up. Okay. But hope you're having a great week. We're busy. Girls have volleyball, two games coming up, Thursday and Friday. Going to a pastor's meeting tomorrow. So, lots going on, which means we need to get on with recording. Yes, we do. Let's do it. Gather around, everybody. It's time for a family meeting. The family meeting is a show that's all about family relationships. We're the Ostracamps. I'm Thomas. This is my wife, Little Lulu. Hello and welcome to our family. Welcome to episode 102 of the Family Meeting Podcast. On today's episode, we are going to look into the temptation to try to force our children into the mold we have prepared for them. Trying to make cookie cutters out of our kids. We're going to talk about allowing them to be who they are or who God made them to be, I should say. And this episode is going to apply to parents who have children at home. But it also will apply to those who have adult children, maybe even more so. Sure. Yeah. So we're going to kind of look at all of that that kind of stuff today on episode 102. Now, before we dive into that, we wanted to review a milestone we had here in our lives yesterday. Mm -hmm. And that is yesterday was our one-year Florida-versary. Yes. Where we made our way on down, moved to Florida one year ago yesterday, and... It, yesterday was so crazy busy. Like Monday, I was thinking, okay, when is there a possible time we can do something special to kind of mark this? Like celebrate. Um, and there was like nothing. So the only thing that I could think of was I'm, I would skip the gym and we'd get up early and we'd go watch the sunrise on the beach. Mm-hmm. And then go down to Swiller Bees, one of our favorite spots down there, and get donuts. Which was a really good idea. And if it, let me just tell everybody, which if you've been listening to this podcast for any amount of time, then you already know this. But for those of you who may be new to the podcast, if it weren't for Thomas, we would never celebrate any anniversary. No dates of any kind would be remembered. There would be no, there would be no celebration in our family. You, you bring that celebration aspect. Like, what can we do to make this fun? What can we do to commemorate? You're like great at mem- building memorials. Yeah. Well, it's. I think it's important to celebrate. It is. I agree that it's important, but I don't ever think about it. And if it were me, I would have looked at our Tuesday, which was yesterday, and I would have been like, oh, yep, we've got, we're booked with meetings all day, and then the kids have youth group in the evening, so there's no opportunity. And I would have kind of given up, but you, you had a good idea. It's Florida. I had to celebrate. Well, I, and I don't think you're alone. Like, I just think about some of the milestones in our lives Mm -hmm. that really nobody ever paid attention to and never noticed. And so you're you're not alone in that Mm -hmm. and not thinking about them. But I just, I like to celebrate whenever I can celebrate. So Yeah, and it's a really good, it's a good thing that you bring into the family. And, um... I'm thankful for it, and I'm really thankful for the the time that we took yesterday on the beach watching the sunrise. We each spoke about something that we were, like a blessing that we have um, been given in the last year. Just spent some time reflecting on what God has done for us this past year. Yeah, and then not only did we just talk about it, but we went ahead and turned that into praise, and we each took a turn praying and thanking God and praising Him for the last year. And it was a very nostalgic day for me. I started reliving unpacking the truck oh yeah and like that that the amount of emotions that day um 
standing in the truck where like these people we had never met before were like we're shaking hands meeting people for the first time as they unload like this our whole stuff army came and unloaded the truck yeah and it just how how surreal that was and then everybody left like it was done in two hours everybody left we walked inside to our new home just stuff everywhere <laughs> yeah uh, boxes to the ceiling furniture upside down like it was terrible especially for somebody like me and I walked around the corner and everybody had left. We're exhausted from the, the amount of travel and no sleep leading up to like packing up. Yeah. And I just cried. I remember we all just wept. There were so many emotions. Yeah. And it was just interesting to kind of take a little time and, and Re- relive it. Relive that. Well, relive I think it. one of the highlights for me yesterday on the beach was hearing Catherine pray and thank God for Florida. Mm-hmm. And, and say I love and living she here. She loves to be here, so that was yeah. that was awesome because that mm-hmm. was that was our biggest fear moving down here was yes, are our kids gonna hate us forever? <laughs> yeah, and worse than that, even are they gonna hate God? And so far, we haven't seen that. But you so know what? Far, that knock kind on of wood. Yeah, knock on wood. That kind of leads us into this discussion today about trying to make our kids into a mold because one of the many molds that we can create for our children is for them to be spiritual giants. <laughs> And you know what? Our kids might not be spiritual giants. They may not even know the Lord, depending on, you know, what your family dynamic is. And so that's kind of what we want to talk about um, today and just figuring out how can we accept who our children were made by God to be and also who they want to be, what their personality is like and the direction they want to take their lives. It's, It's difficult to sit back and not be that marionette yeah like well and the way that i kind of look at it we just just recently this past week watched the latest installment in the jurassic world series (laughs) and one of the scientists had cloned herself and this child was a big part of the movie and that's that's kind of what it makes me think of is we we often try to make our children little clones of us Mm -hmm. when that's not that's not the way that God designed them or created them to be. He right. created them as individuals to be what they what they're supposed to be. Um, mm-hmm. So, thinking back on your childhood, what what was it like? Did you feel pressure from your parents to be a certain thing, act a certain way, press into a certain mold? My first response to that is no, not at all. My parents were totally accepting, and they were. I just, I constantly remember hearing my parents say things like, I'm proud of you and great job. And um, like, I'm so glad that God gave us you. Things like, like really positive things um, that, that really helped me feel loved, feel accepted. Um, However, for my parents, their most important thing was that we loved God and that we were following him and I was doing that. And so... I don't know if my sister and brother would have the same perspective at that younger age Um, because they they definitely made some interesting choices like when they were in their teen years, which I don't think were what my parents would have chosen for them. So they may have a different perspective on that. But my memory and my experience in my home was a lot of like support. Um, They were proud of me. That's like that's what I remember. I remember my parents like being proud of me. Well, and and all of you siblings, talking about you, your sister, and your brother, took different paths in life. Mm-hmm. And your your parents, from from my perspective, have always been encouraging, supportive of what they wanted to do in their lives. So yeah, I think so too. And now we're all grown adults, getting old, <laughs> and really, each of us love God. Each of us love God very much, and that that's something that um that's i think makes my my parents very very happy i think my parents are happy with all three of us i i think back on my childhood and with my parents i i never felt pressured to be anything or do anything like i never felt like they were trying to to make me a clone of anything or mold me in anything they just didn't want me to be like a drain on society like they wanted you to work or them yeah yeah you're yeah, not going to live in our basement yeah. kind of thing. Oh, you, we didn't want to live in that basement anyway, but <laughs> um, it would have been that would have been a desperate scenario, but 
Yeah, they want they wanted uh, all of us to go out and work and and live happy lives, but I never felt pressure to to be anything. Mm-hmm. And my parents yeah. my parents were and and continue to be very supportive of what I do in life. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah. I th- I think that's true of all all of us kids. Yeah, I I feel like your mom is very pleased with every one of your siblings. I think she's very proud of you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And she talks, she always talks highly about whatever any of my siblings are doing. Yeah. Um, whether it's what Mickey has going on in her life, you know, she's, she's always excited and supportive. Chris, the same thing, Jonathan and what he's doing. Yeah. Um, so we've not, we, I've not felt that pressure at all. Right. But you know, this is not the case for every child growing up. There are a lot of children um, who have grown up in homes where their parents were trying to push them into athletics, push them to get a higher education, become a doctor, get the money, um, pushing them toward a certain profession, uh, maybe pastor. I mean, we know people who said, who like were in the ministry as pastor for years and realized, I did this because my parents were pushing me to do this. Yeah. My dad was a pastor and I was supposed to be a pastor. That yep. was what was expected. And so I did that. And finally realizing after years of being unhappy and kind of miserable in the ministry, finally said, this is not what I'm supposed to do. This is not who I am. And then when they came to that realization, made the change, they felt freedom. Yeah. Found found a niche that they're very good at, very successful at. Yeah. Now their family's off living some awesome adventure. Right. And so we, we want to encourage you parents out there to allow your kids to be who they are supposed to be and not try to fit them into whatever mold you're trying to. It's not only, it's not just like creating clones necessarily. I think it can also be living vicariously. Like I didn't get on the football team. So I want you to be on the football team. I want to like live vicariously through you. You know, uh, my life was so hard and I worked all the time. I didn't get to be that cheerleader and go to prom and have this fun. So I want that for you, even though that might not be what your kid wants at all. Yeah. So just kind of evaluating what what are we communicating so to our me, kid? Let me put you on the hot seat right now. Okay. Do you at all feel like just thinking about this that you in any way, shape, or form are pressing the our daughters into some sort of mold? Um. Yeah. Sometimes I will absolutely catch myself doing that. Um, like in what ways? The the mold that I'm trying to push my girls into is serving God for sure. Like because that's my passion. That's that's what I love. It's what brings me joy. I want them to have joy. I want them to make a difference on this earth. I, I don't want them to just be a vapor of nothingness. Like I want them to make a difference that will matter for eternity, not just here. And so I'm definitely pushing them that way. Um, and there have been times where I've been disappointed, like, man, I really wanted them to want to do that. And they didn't. Yeah. And I had to, I had to let that go. And I had to let them be who they were, um, who they are, who they wanted to be at that moment. Um, and it is, it is tough. And I think that it's more of unsaid thing. I, like, I don't think I'm, I'm not actually telling them like, hey, you need to do this because I want you to be this. Yeah. I don't think I'm verbalizing it. Maybe sometimes the message is getting across. What about you? Are you pushing them into a mold? I honestly don't feel like I am. I, obviously, you know, as a pastor and as their father, I want them to love God and follow him. But... Um, I don't feel like I'm pressuring in them to do that. I, I think it'd be way different if I had a son, honestly. Mm, interesting. And, and we've had this conversation before. You know, I think I would have pushed pushed a son into to sports and into certain things that they might not necessarily been been into. So having daughters, where it's like I'm, they're not really clones of me. <laughs> Nor, nor could they be, so... Yeah, and so it's. I've never felt the pressure, you know, I've never felt like like the need to do that. Okay. Like, I understand that they're just going to be who they, who, they, who they are. Yeah. Um. But who knows? Just because I, I feel like I'm not... Maybe I am, because sometimes without realizing it, we are trying to force our kids into our mold. This is why family meetings are so important. You can ask the question. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. You feel like I'm pressuring you. Yeah. Um, and we'll talk about that at the end of the episode, but 
what we want to impart to you today is to love your children for who they are, not who you want them to be. Mm -hmm. And if we don't, we can create a child who feels broken, that feels inadequate, feels like they will, they never measure up in your eyes. And it's so sad to, to talk to adults and have conversations and counseling with people who they, they, they feel like that. Mm -hmm. And they have this thing that just continues to nag them even in adulthood and cripple them because they never felt like they measured up to what their parents or somebody else wanted them to be. And, and we can get to this place where we can absolutely just break their spirit. Mm -hmm. And that is not why God put you into your child's life. The, the point of us being in our children's life is to build them up and to guide them. You know, I think about that admonition to fathers, and I think it's Ephesians chapter number five. It talks about bringing our kids up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord, the idea of building them up. Um, we want to uh, equip them to be the best version of who God created them to be. Mm -hmm. And the best version of who God created them to be is not exactly like me. It's not exactly like you. Mm -hmm. Right. And sometimes when we get that that kind of um, expectation in our mind of who we want our children to be, that cookie cutter we're trying to shape them into, it's like we get this idea, I want them to be like this. So I just wish there was like this formula. And if I can follow the formula, I'm going to have this certain outcome and it's going to be good and they're going to be this person. Yeah. But there is no formula. So get rid of that idea. <laughs> Maybe we can invent a formula. We cannot. Give up, babe. We would be filthy rich. We would if, if we could and we cannot. Because every child is an individual. They have different talents, different struggles. They have different personalities and gifts, abilities. They have their own sin issues that maybe we don't have. They have a direction that God is trying to get them to go. And really, we can't fully know what that direction is supposed to be. That's got to be between them and God. And so sometimes it's like we can communicate to our children that we want them to fit into this mold we have in our mind without actually saying words. Like, yeah. I'm not actually telling my child, listen, I want you to be this phenomenal athlete and I want you to be amazing in football. <laughs> I'm going to choose football right now at this moment. I want you to be this fabulous football player. And so when they're little, you communicate that and you say, oh, hey, you know what? What are you playing at recess? Did you play? You should take the football to school. And you should play that at recess, you know? Um, maybe you want your daughters to be these amazing volleyball stars. And so you start saying, let's get a volleyball for your birthday and, and we'll get knee pads for Christmas. What about playing volleyball at the park with your friends? I never wanted kids who were into sports. You didn't? I don't know because you're, I, I watch some of these parents whose kids are into all these sports and they're so busy all the time. Yes. And we're getting a taste of that because our mm -hmm. girls are now in volleyball. Mm -hmm. And so it's either practice every day or a game or running to this town or that town. And it's Okay, but what about when you were like young? Like when you dreamt of having a family? You did dream of having a family? Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Did you think like, oh, I'm going to have boys who are awesome and not into baseball and soccer and basketball? And basketball for sure, basketball. yeah. Like you were like, I'm going to raise little basketball players. They're going to yeah. be amazing. Yeah. Okay, so at some point you did have that dream. They were going to be about five or six inches taller than me, so they actually had a shot. You needed to go after a really tall woman, and no, you messed up. Went the, went the other route. <laughs> you went with a short woman who gave you girls. Which wouldn't matter anyway, because I had girls, so... Dreams crumble. Yeah. But, but here's the thing. Like, are you pushing them towards something without actually saying it? You know, pushing them toward that sport... Um, you're sending a message without being direct, like, this is what I'm trying to make you to be. So um, maybe you really wanted your child to be an athlete. And you know what? Your child wants to be a beekeeper. You That's know, interesting. You know who you are out there. Your child is a beekeeper, not an athlete. Celebrate your little beekeeper. It's actually kind of interesting. Celebrate that, though, right? Like, yeah. whoever they ended up being celebrate who they are they didn't fail you no 
it, we had a guy in our church in Iowa that, that did beekeeping. It was awesome. Like I went out and saw the whole whole thing. It was so fascinating. Mm-hmm. And we got really good honey from him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So enjoy the honey. Yeah. It gives it gives back way more than some ball will. Mm-hmm. Unless your kid is like one of the half percent population who's going to turn pro and make millions of dollars and you'll be set for the rest of your life. Right. But that's not me. It's so. probably not going to happen. Now, if we can get our girls into beekeeping. <laughs> Please, no. Then I Violet can, will never do that. Then She's I terrified. Have a natural honey empire. <laughs> but if you're, uh, if you're given a tomboy, raise a tomboy. If you wanted a ballerina, but you got a tomboy, okay, you might have to grieve that. Yeah. Grieve the loss of what you do not have. And celebrate and embrace what you do have. You know, I think about, we had to do this to an extent for our our girls because deep down, I really wanted a boy every single time. Mm-hmm. And the day would come where we'd have the test, mm-hmm. boy or girl. Four times. Every time it came back girl, in my heart, I was devastated. I was too. And I had to grieve that. And especially once they were born. Like, I didn't care that they no. were not a boy. Mm-mm, didn't matter. Like, I absolutely love and adore all four of my daughters. I do not care at this point in my life that I had did not have a son. In fact, I'm kind of glad now, looking back, I don't have a son. We have a, we have a lot of friends that have a lot of boys. and <laughs> Their, their it, stories are intense. It seems like a lot of work. So. Sorry, all you boy parents. Seriously. We feel you, we feel your pain. But... <laughs> So we've ha- we've had to go through that process of like grieving what we wanted and mm-hmm. what might have been, mm-hmm. and I think that's okay. But you have to you, you have to then let that go, and learn to celebrate and embrace all that you have, and then you'll see the positives and you'll put the negatives in proper perspective, and you'll decide decide as a parent I don't even need to point out that negative today. Mm, yeah. That's good. Um, This, I feel like, is the opportunity in our podcast where we need to quote from Anne of Green Gables. When isn't there a time on the podcast to quote from (laughs) Anne of Green Gables? Do you know what quote you need to quote? You don't want me because I'm not a boy. There you go. Very good. Uh, He comes through every time. He's a good man who knows Anne of Green Gables. Yeah, I watched it with my mom. Yeah. But we we don't want to. She wanted me to be a girl, <laughs> <laughs> right? <clears throat> uh, but we try not to communicate to our girls like, "Man, we wish you were boys," <laughs> in any way, you know, verbally or otherwise. And if I had to really dig deep and say, "Okay, what did I really want my kids to be?" Listen, I didn't want athletes. I'm with you on that, babe. I did not want athletes. Watching sports is torture for me. Um, it always has been. Um, I don't understand sports. I didn't play sports. How do you feel now that your kids are playing sports about watching it? It's so different. When my kids are on the on the court, I'm like screaming. I'm like screaming like, wow, I'm so into it. It's hilarious. So I now I understand a lot better what it's like when your own kid is on the court. But um, what about when you're watching a game (laughs) and none of our three girls are on the I'm a bad I'm a bad team player. Because when my kids are not on the court, which is rare, it is very rare for all three of our girls to be on the bench. Yeah. That doesn't happen very often. Because we have three girls on varsity and then Violet is on our, the junior varsity On the JV. Team. So when all three of our girls were on the bench just the other day, I was like scrolling Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> not even paying attention anymore. She's not cheering at all. No, I just, and well, when something would happen, I would look up and be like, yeah, you know. Yeah, and most of the time you're cheering for the other team. I, I've always done that, though. That's always been a problem of mine. But I'm going to work on that and because I, I am starting to get to know the other parents on the team and the other girls and I'm starting to feel a connection with them, but it's still not the same as watching your own kid play. Yeah. Okay. So, but I never wanted athletes. That was not what I was shooting for. The girls do not like volleyball because either of us pushed them towards it. Um, they, they like volleyball because it, an anime show. Yeah. And, and simultaneously their cousin was on a team and liked to play. So then they played with their cousin and watched yeah. the show and it but became a thing. It's funny because they got into anime mm-hmm. and watched that show and that's what got them into volleyball. It's really. so weird how that all happened. But no, I mean, now I'm enjoying it. But anyway, I'll tell you what I wanted them. 
I wanted my girls to be interested in what I enjoyed as, in, as a teenager because that's what I was into. Like, I loved taking care of children. I like did all kinds of nursery stuff at our church and I was doing five day clubs. I like to teach children. You watch your niece all the time. Yeah, my niece was like my little right arm. I had her all the time. Um, and my cousin before that, before yeah, my niece cousin. was born, I had yeah. my cousin. So I loved children and, and just like taking care of kids and working with children. I loved drama and I was in all these like drama teams and stuff like that. And I loved working. So guess what I wanted my kids to be? Like my little dream was that I would have girls who loved taking care of children and I would be so proud of them as they like invested in the lives of children. And I wanted to see them in, in dramatic things. And, and they used to really love like Christmas programs and acting. That was really their favorite thing for a while. They used to put on plays around the house. That oh, was like my. the worst thing ever. Yes, yes. You but listen, to pretend to like that crap. Yeah, and and <laughs> <laughs> that was tough. Um, but I didn't care about getting amazing grades or getting on a team or going to prom or any of that kind of stuff. So that wasn't even on my radar for my kids. I just wanted my kids to be super friendly and outgoing. I wanted them to make friends easily. I wanted them to be all in for Jesus before they really were ready to choose that for themselves. And for a time, I was disappointed. Because that's not who they were turning out to be. They were, for a little while, in my opinion, they were a little self-centered. Like, it was not about anybody else but themselves. And I was like, what What happened? What did we do wrong? They are normal human children. They were normal human children. And I had to grieve that, kind of, and, and like, accept it. But not then... Not everyone literally fell from heaven like you did. Fell from heaven? Yeah. I didn't fall from heaven. Yeah. You're like this angel. You always have been. I am not an angel. You know me better than anybody. I know. You know the real me. Which means you're an angel. The (laughs) demon. Okay. So, um, this is what's kind of cool, though, is that eventually God, in his leading, in his timing, key, his timing, turned their hearts around. And now they really are. Like, they're really involved in the kids' ministry in our church, and they are planning things, and they're having fun Like, how can we make the games fun for these kids? And Abigail's teaching. And so, like, all of that stuff is making me really pleased and happy. Isabella and Abigail are spiritually mentoring other teens. Yeah, that's, like, that's the mold I wanted to to push them into. Which was their idea. It was their idea. And that, I think, is what's really important, is that it wasn't us pushing them to do these things. They had a choice, and and they made the choice. And even the mentoring, that was their idea. It wasn't even our idea. So, um, so I'm really thankful for that, but what would I be like if that's not what they were doing right now? What would I feel like if they were going the other way? And one of the keys here is not pretending to accept your child for who they are, but actually accepting them for who they are. Mm. So we're not just pretending. Yeah. Not pretending that, Hey, it's it's so awesome that you're a ballerina. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. When I wanted this star basketball player, Mm. you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But actually accepting them for who they are Mm -hmm. and who God made them to be. And if you're struggling to do this, it's time to go to the Lord and ask him for help. Ask God to give you the ability to accept your child for who they are no matter what and no matter their choices. Okay, so here's what I'm going to give you listeners the permission to do. I'm going to give you the permission to right now dream fall into those dreams. What did you want your child to be? Did you want your child to be a boy or a girl? Did you want your child to be an athlete or the, you know, chess champion? Did you <laughs> did you dream of a beekeeper? How many, how many parents dream of their kids being a chess champion? Chess champions. Yeah. Yeah. It's, they're out there. Math geniuses want probably math geniuses. Maybe you were musical and you you just wanted your child to like be this performer and musician. Go ahead and dream. Talk about it. Think about it. I've already shared with you what I wanted my kids to be. Um, what do you really want your kids to be? Or maybe you have adult children. What did you want them to be? Everybody thinking about it? You've got it in your mind? Thomas, you got it in your mind? Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess. What'd you dream? I mean, I just want my girls to make an impact on the world and, and change their world. Like, okay. I don't necessarily have specifics. Like, I want them to do this or that. Yeah, me too. I'm the same way with you. Just just do something for God. Okay. All 
All right, everybody, you've got your dream of what you want your children to become or what you wanted them to become. Now, acknowledge that that's what you would choose for them and take that dream and throw it in the trash. Throw it in the trash. (laughs) Or put it in the blender, grind it up, pour it in the sink, turn on the garbage disposal. (laughs) Sledgehammer. Sledgehammering is fun if you're angry. Yeah, I mean, you can't really sledgehammer Crush it. dreams. Okay, <laughs> but you can blend them? <laughs> <laughs> what I was actually going to say, I wasn't going to be as like violent as Thomas. I usually am not. I was going to say, take that dream and put it at the feet of Jesus. I was going to say, give it to God. Well, well, you didn't let me finish. Oh, okay. So once you turn on the garbage disposal, <laughs> that drain runs Ooh, right to the feet of Jesus. Okay, gross. And so you can give it to him. That's, That's what I was trying to say. A disgusting picture. But listen, you might have to, all, all joking aside, you might have to grieve that loss. You might have yeah. to let it go. You might have to say, okay, I wanted my child to be a pastor. And he is a water delivery consultant. Grieve the loss that you didn't have a pastor. You didn't have a son who grew up to be a pastor. If you wanted the athlete, and they didn't become that athlete. You've got to grieve that loss. It, it is a loss because you had an expectation. You had a dream that didn't come true. Accept that as a loss. Grieve it. Allow, allow yourself to grieve it. Talk to God about it. And then you've got to just let that go. And but maybe your kid turns out to be exactly what you wanted them to be. That'd great. be nice. Like, great. <laughs> um, but if you can let that go now... You won't subconsciously try to impart that desire to your kids. Right. Because that can have a devastating effect on them. Mm-hmm. You know, I think about this guy that was in the ministry just to please his parents. You know, he was absolutely miserable doing that. Mm-hmm. And it was very obvious, maybe to those outside of the situation. Um. They need to fully understand that their parents will love them no matter what. No matter who they become. Mm -hmm. Yes, even if they turn their back on your beliefs. Wow. That'd be hard. That would be hard for me. I think that would be very hard for you. (laughs) But not for you. You'd be like, I'm amazing. I wouldn't even mind. No, no, because I've thought about I've thought about it already. Like you've allowed yourself to think through that scenario. Yeah, we because we have four daughters. Like statistically speaking, at least one of them is going to do something or be something mm-hmm. that I don't agree with. Mm-hmm. But I st- it's my daughter. Absolutely. So yeah. I still want to love her. I still want to support her. I still want to be encouraging to her. Mm-hmm. And. In episode 31, we discussed in, in kind of in depth in our, we, um, we talked about unconditional love. So maybe you need to go back and kind of review that. Mm-hmm. Um, but one of the things that I think about is Psalm 139. And I've got a few verses here I want to read to you. And I just want you to kind of listen and listen this conversation that David's having with God. And he says this in verse number 13. For you formed my inward parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you. For I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. My soul knows it very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was being made in secret, intricately woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed substance. In your book were written every one of them, the days that were formed for me when, at, when as yet there was none of them. How precious to me are your thoughts, O God, how vast is the sum of them. If I would count them, they are more than the sand. And you think about, the psalmist is writing this saying, God, you made me to be who I am. And that same thing applies to you personally. Mm-hmm. Same thing applies to your kids right. individually. Yeah, he he didn't make a mistake. And maybe you're feeling that because your child is not going the direction you wanted. Like this this child is a mistake. This child is is failing. 
And, and, and that isn't true because just like God made you perfectly and he didn't make a mistake with you, he made every single one of your children perfectly and he did not make any mistakes with them. Yeah. Um, so are we communicating that to them though? Are we communicating to them? You're made perfectly by God. You are not a mistake. You are not a failure. These may be words that they need to hear. Things like, it's okay, I still love you, or I'm proud of you, those kinds of things. Um, What are we actually communicating to our children? Because the truth is that they aren't a mistake. Now, can they make mistakes? Yeah. (laughs) Can they fail? Can they sin? Of course. And we're not talking about that. We're talking about loving them no matter their personality or their choices in life as far as not sinful choices, but but even to love them in spite of sinful choices, right? Yeah. yeah. That's, a, that's a part of it too. So one thing though is maybe you aren't communicating to them, God made you perfect. God didn't make a mistake with you. You are not a failure. I am proud of you. Maybe we're not communicating that, but maybe we're saying some phrases and we have some phrases in our arsenal that need to be taken out completely. Because there are phrases that can communicate things to them like, that you don't want them to fit, that, that they aren't fitting into the mold that you wanted. So things like, why can't you just be more like, mm. fill in the blank, might be, why can't you be more like your sister? Why can't you be more like your brother? Why can't you be more like me? Why can't you be more like the neighbor kids down the street? Whoever. Why can't you be more like so-and-so? Do you know the Smith kids don't do that? Saying that to your I child. I know the Smith kids, and they definitely don't do that. <laughs> we actually know a family of the Smiths. They are fabulous. Their kids don't do that. <laughs> How about this? This is pretty specific. If you really want God's blessing on your life, you'll become a pastor or a pastor's wife. You'll become a missionary. And we know people who have become missionaries for the purpose of pleasing their parents. Or their pastor. Or their yeah. pastor, and realized that it was not what I was supposed to be. Don't be like that. That's not who you want to be. You don't want to be like that. But maybe they do want to be like that. It's that you don't want them to be like that. Um, so, oh, yeah. So this is something that I ask our kids quite frequently, probably not very much when you're around, um, usually when I have alone time with them. I'll ask my kids, like, who do you want to be? Who do you really want to be? Because they'll tell me a story of something that happened in a group, something that happened, um, you know, either in a homeschool group, at church, on their team, whatever. And I'll say, like, who do you want to be? On your volleyball team, do you want to be the kid who's cranky and is always criticizing people? Do you want to be the kid who is cheering everybody on and making them feel better even when they make mistakes? Who do you want to be? Do you want to be the kid who makes other people, other kids feel comfortable? Um, what, what kind of kid do you want to be in that group? Do you want to be the most popular kid? Is that what your goal is? Who do you want to be right now? Also, who do you want to be in the future? Do you, like what, not only vocationally, and, and what do you want to be, but who do you want to be? Like, what do you want to be known for? And then we've got to really let them decide. They have to make that choice for themselves with God's help, who they want to be and what they want to be. And we have to allow them to dream about who they want to be. You know, the direction that their lives will go and what that will look like. And we need to kind of foster an atmosphere and you may have to literally give them permission to be real and authentic and and make sure they know you'll love them no matter what obviously we we call sin sin jesus did that Uh, i think about the woman taken in adultery like one of the things he said to her was hey go and sin no more but he was also loving he was compassionate he was merciful and he accepted her um so you, you call sin, sin, you call wrong, wrong, but you can still accept the person. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah. And so this was something that um, Abigail and I had this conversation this morning and I wanted to share it with everyone because it goes right along with this. So when Abigail was little, she had a lot of anxiety and she used to say things like, 
I never want to have babies. I never want to get married because if I get married, I have to have babies and I'm, it's going to hurt and I don't want to have babies. <laughs> so I'm like, Abigail, you know, you're five. Let's not make that and decision right now. Wor- she's worried about <laughs> giving birth at five. Yeah, she really was. And it's not like we talked about it all the time or anything. I guess just on TV or something. I don't even know where she's getting this. I don't know. But she would also say at that age, like, I don't want to go to college. I don't want to have to go to college. She's just starting kindergarten talking about fear of college. And so I'd say, Abigail, you're going to go to college and it's not going to be as bad when you're older. You're, it, you're, you're going to go to college. And I would say that to her and I didn't even really realize how it was impacting her. But so this whole time since she was five, she's been kind of worried in the back of her mind about the fact that she will only please me if she goes to college. Mm. And I don't feel that way at all. Um, I'm not, I'm not pushing any of my kids in that direction. We have lots of friends who have done trade school, um, cosmetology school, things like that, who are making an excellent living and making an impact in their realm for Jesus, um, but that are also good citizens and I believe pleasing the Lord. So I have no, I I don't mind either way. And there's plenty of rich dudes out there. (laughs) You can just marry a rich dude. And there are people who don't have college degrees who make very good income. So if we're just talking about money, then it doesn't really make that much difference. So, But I always wanted them to have every opportunity, right? So right. I was trying yeah. to encourage her, yes, I want you to go to college. I want you to have an education but that will open five, more doors. Don't shut off an opportunity that you may want later. Yes, that was what I was trying to communicate to her. But what I ended up communicating to her was that she was going to go to college one way or the other because that was the only option that I have for her. And the, so we were talking and I said, oh, honey, it's okay. You don't have to worry because now that the older two are going to Daytona State College and doing dual enrollment, even though they're in high school, um, Abigail's like, do I have to do that next year? And I said, no, you don't have to do that next year if that's not what you think, you know, the direction that you think you want to go. What do you think you want to do? Who do you want to be? And we started to have this conversation. And she said that she felt such relief when I told her she doesn't have to necessarily go to a four-year college. She can go to a trade school. She can go into some vocation. And I think that that pressure was taken off of her. Yeah. So even though I wasn't trying to communicate that to her, I did. And so it's just something to talk to your kids about. Talk to them. Even if you have adult children, talk to them. Do you feel like you've disappointed me? Because I want you to know I'm proud of you. I'm proud of this aspect of your life and that you're doing this and you're kind to these people or whatever. Find the positives and make sure that your kid knows that you accept them for who they are. Even if you don't accept sin, make sure that you under- they understand that you accept them. And that leads us into the family meeting we want you to have tonight. And that is sit down as a family and have each family member talk about who you are and who God made you to be. And just kind of go around the room and just chat a little bit and talk about each person's uniqueness, um, what makes them special, what makes them unique. And take time and make sure you say the words to one another. I, I accept you for who you are. And there may be some instances where you have, whether consciously or subconsciously, been trying to force your kids into a mold. You've been trying to make them a clone of you or what you want them to be. And you have to apologize for that. Mm-hmm. Man, listen, I'm sorry. I've been pushing you into this sport. And you've been telling me for a long time you don't like it. You don't have to do it. You know, I think about what we did with our curls with piano. Oh, yeah, that's right. And this just came to my mind. You know, we had our kids in piano lessons, which there's nothing wrong with getting kids into piano lessons and stuff. But from when they were like four, we made them kind of continue on, even though they didn't really want it. And um, finally got to a place where it was like, no, you don't. You don't. I guess you don't have to continue. Like, there's no no reason Mm -hmm. to. But it came about because we, we had a conversation about it. Um, and so maybe you have to have a conversation about it and say, listen, do you feel like there's any area of your life where I'm forcing you and pressing you into a mold that you shouldn't be pressed into? Um, now, they may bring up things like chores and whatever else. No, we're not talking <laughs> about that. You're pressing me into a dishwasher mo- mold, and I don't think that's who I am. <laughs> yeah, that's not what we're talking about. Yeah. You know, Listen, kids, I'm not a dishwasher either. <laughs> 
kids, you know, we still have to we we have to teach character and work ethic and all those things. But but I'm you understand what I'm talking about? Pressing them into a mold of something that they're not, mm-hmm. and they're never going to be, and they yeah. shouldn't be, and God didn't make them that way. Um, and so spend some time in family meeting just. Just have a little chat about that. Make sure that every person in your family knows they're loved, they're appreciated, they're valued, and they're accepted for exactly who God made them to be. Thank you for joining us today. Hey, guys, have you subscribed to the Family Meeting Podcast yet? You can go and do that right now from your favorite podcast provider. And if you found this information to be helpful, please share this episode on social media and invite your friends and family to listen in with you. You can find more content and information Lysander and I provide on our website over at familymeeting.org. Maybe you want to share an episode idea with us. You guys were having a family meeting. You were talking about something. It came up in your life and you say, hey, you know what? This would make a great episode. Shoot that episode idea to us at info at familymeeting.org. Or you can send us a voice message at 904 257-3062. And we want to invite you to join us for our next family meeting. We are going to look at an important marriage skill, listening. What did you say? I didn't hear you. I know. That's why we're doing this episode. (laughs) Tune in next week, babe. Thanks for joining us today for this family meeting. Have a great week, everybody. Wait, what did you say we're talking about? (sighs) This meeting is adjourned. Stole you just your line. Stole my line. Stole your line. 101 episodes of me saying that, and you just stole it on 102. Hi, Jack. Now I want to do it every episode. You better say it fast in the future, or I'm right. going to just take I'm it. I'm going to start stealing your lines then. You've been doing that since episode one. I know. I'm going to steal all of them. Uh, well, then I just wouldn't have to show up. That sounds great. No, you can sit here, look pretty for the camera while I do all the talking. <laughs> no thank you i like this idea i do not so just look pretty for the camera and i'm gonna talk now hey everybody out there this is the family meeting i'm thomas this is my eye candy lissandra <laughs> i typed my name in wrong on the computer today yeah and it, on spell check it said lizard <laughs> <laughs> i was like man that's sad <laughs> so all right me and that's Lizard my day are out talk to you later bye bye